concentrate on wealth. It was never intended that man should be poor. When wealth is obtained under the proper conditions, it broadens the life. Everything has its value. Everything has a good use and a bad use. The forces of mind, like wealth, can be directed either for good or evil. A little rest will recreate forces. Too much rest degenerates into laziness and brainless dreamy longings. If you acquire wealth unjustly from others, you are misusing your forces. But if your wealth comes through the right sources, you will be blessed. Through wealth, we can do things to uplift ourselves and humanity. Wealth is many persons' goal. It therefore stimulates their endeavor. They long for it in order to dress and live in such a way as to attract friends. Without friends, they would not be so particular of their surroundings. The fact is the more attractive we make ourselves and our surroundings, the more inspiring are their influences. It is not conducive to proper thought to be surrounded by conditions that are uncongenial and unpleasant. So the first step toward acquiring wealth is to surround yourself with helpful influences. To claim for yourself an environment of culture, place yourself in it and be molded by its influences. Most great men of all ages have been comparatively rich. They have made or inherited money. Without money they could not have accomplished what they did. The man engaged in physical drudgery is not likely to have the same high ideals as the man that can command comparative leisure. Wealth is usually the fruit of achievement. It is not, however, altogether the result of being industrious. Thousands of persons work hard who never grow wealthy. Others with much less effort acquire wealth. Seeing possibilities is another step toward acquiring wealth. A man may be as industrious as he can possibly be, but if he does not use his mental forces, he will be a laborer to be directed by the man that uses to good advantage his mental forces. No one can become wealthy in an ordinary lifetime by mere savings from earnings. Many scrimp and economize all their lives, but by so doing waste all their vitality and energy. For example, I know a man that used to walk to work. It took him an hour to go and an hour to return. He could have taken a car and gone in 20 minutes. He saved 10 cents a day but wasted an hour and a half. It was not a very profitable investment unless the time spent in physical exercise yielded him large returns in the way of health. The same amount of time spent in concentrated effort to overcome his unfavorable business environment might have firmly planted his feet in the path of prosperity. One of the big mistakes made by many persons of the present generation is that they associate with those who fail to call out or develop the best that is in them. When the social side of life is developed too exclusively, as it often is, and recreation or entertainment becomes the leading motive of a person's life, he acquires habits of extravagance instead of economy, habits of wasting his resources, physical, mental, moral, and spiritual, instead of conserving them. He is, in consequence, lacking in proper motivation. His God-given powers and forces are undeveloped, and he inevitably brings poor judgment to bear upon all the higher relationships of life. While as to his financial fortunes, he is ever the leaner, often a parasite, and always, if opportunity affords, as heavy a consumer as he is a poor producer. It seems a part of the tragedy of life that these persons have to be taught such painful lessons before they can understand the forces and laws that regulate life. Few profit by the mistakes of others. They must experience them for themselves and then apply the knowledge so gained in reconstructing their lives. Any man that has ever amounted to anything has never done a great deal of detail work for long periods at any given time. He needs his time to reflect. He does not do his duties today in the same way as yesterday, but as the...